persecution. Some people in the world for their faith go through almost exactly that today in parts of the world. But we're blessed, delivered and safeguarded from, from all of that. But we do nevertheless feel pain in everyday life. We do nevertheless feel emotionally that we can't handle things. So, but we have a great high priest. Since he was in all points tempted, like as we are. So we can't even say, oh, we get tempted. So we had to give in. There's no excuse to give in to temptation because Jesus didn't give in to it. He is able to succor them that are tempted. He's a sympathetic great high priest. He's attentive to our needs and he's always, always willing to help. And that's why, why we say, let us boldly come before the throne of grace in Hebrews 4.16. We don't need to come through a priest or even a, a high priest as they used to do there, but we can just cry out, Abba Father, we can just cry out to Jesus and it's right there. So since we have such a high priest, we should approach God boldly. Not brazenly or irreverently, but openly, confidently and without reservation. So we can come and just talk to the Lord just as it is, just as we see it, just as, as we feel it, okay? Come boldly, expressing our weaknesses and frailties, knowing that he'll succour and lift us up. Jesus was qualified as the ultimate high priest. Whilst in the days of his flesh, when he walked the earth, Jesus offered up prayers and supplications. And though he were a son, yet... He learned obedience through the things that he suffered. He became obedient unto death, even the death of the cross. His sacrifice was ultimate, of which all others were just types and shadows. So types and shadows are now gone. The supreme sacrifice that needed to be made for sin, he, could, he alone could wipe that out and that's why he's, he, he is predestined to fill the office of the great high priest. As the son of God he was foreordained forever after the order of Melchizedek. We'll hear about Melchizedek next month when we look at chapter 7. But Melchizedek was often regarded to be an angelic being. Moses, Joshua, and all these people were just men, just physical flesh and bone. But Jesus, after the order of Melchizedek, was regarded higher than all of these. So he, defined, he fulfills the divine requirements to be a high priest. So he, he, he is a son. He was taken from among men, and as much as he was in all points tempted as we are. In his nature he has compassion upon the ignorant, having walked where we walk. He knows our state from a human standpoint. So he's ultimately qualified as a great high priest. And then we get another little aside coming in, in, in chapter 5. You know, they saying that the Hebrews were being challenged for being dull of hearing, so they weren't, they weren't listening properly. Sluggishness of mind and silty growth. So in other words, they weren't growing up as in faith, they weren't growing up spiritually. And Paul mentions this as well. You know, like when meat should be consumed, there's still many of them that were looking for milk, right? And we know that in physical terms, in human terms, 
a babe cannot eat meat, but they can drink milk. But as they grow, they need to move from milk to meat because they need the, the added qualities that that brings to help them to grow. But we cannot just stay in the in the in the primary the primary or the nursery class of of Christianity. We need to grow out of that. And we need to we need to grow and develop to be people that are that know our faith, people that are ready to stand up for our faith, people who can be instruments in God's hands to, to reach out to others. So the meat is a deeper knowledge of the Word of God. You know, we can be in the same position with the Lord. You know, the basic doctrines, we can just hold on to these and not go any further. You know, repentance from dead works. There, uh, these things can't be secured by works of the law or any other works. All must repent to be saved. So these are basic, basic things. Living faith is needed. So we need... It's inconsistent if we say we've got faith and we don't, we don't act um, or live it out. Okay. So if we don't, if we don't do with it, it's only a knowledge that we have in our head, right? So you can go and read a, read a, 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 a book or or a, or a, a work of literature on something that t tells you all about some some event in history or. Or, or a person, a biography or whatever, and you might know everything everything that there is to know, but you don't have a you don't have a relationship with that event or or with that, that person. Okay? So we need to live in faith. And the doctrine the doctrines, the doctrine of baptisms through the Holy Ghost and through water. Mm -hmm. Laying on of hands. All of these are basic doctrines. Yep. Jesus is the giver of the Holy Spirit. The resurrection of the dead. So, and as I said, when that trump sounds and the dead in Christ rise up and the rest of us are captured up to be with him in the air. And that caused a whole lot of issue with some of the Jews coming over because some of them had some issues with how they believed in in the hereafter, okay, so, um, and then there's eternal judgment, so there is a judgment to be faced, but if we continue to grow and as we continue to develop, uh, then we'll be fine because, you know, it be a case of well done, the good and faithful servant, enter into the joy of your Lord. And then, Quickly today we'll touch on chapter 6. And that right on the outset of that, you've got leaving, leaving the principles of the doctrine of Christ, let us go on to perfection. And people read that and they say, oh, we need to go on to perfection. Or, or another way of reading that is that there's some kind of perfection that's attainable, that's possible in this life. Right, uh, in so many other places in the Bible, you know, it's quite clear that that we as as men as women are not perfect. That Jesus, what well, the Lord is a perfect one, okay. But if you read that scripture just on its own and say, well, I'm I'm going to be perfect one day. The only time you be perfect is when when we go to be with the Lord, yeah. because there'll be no more sin. Right? But what that perfection really means is greater growth. So let us move on towards greater growth, you know, right. greater expansion in our faith. Right? Uh, we won't, you know, as much as we, we can become ministers or leaders or pastors or superintendents or some people that are very, very instrumental in the church then we're still, even at that stage, we're still not perfect. 
scale. Um, but there is a there's a school of thought that that people think well they're aiming for perfection, and sometimes that that can that can cause people to think well I can't make it right because I can I can so I can't get to that point of perfection, but really we're about advancing ourselves on that road, you know, and growing in grace. And this we will do if God permit. So every new convert must learn the basic doctrines of Christ. They must be rooted and grounded therein. But they need to continue in knowledge and growth in things of God. And that's what epistles, these letters overall are all about, is about helping people to continue on that, that, that journey. We need to move on spiritually, we can't stand still, we certainly cannot turn back. So then we get verse 4 here, we'll talk a little bit more about this next time. It's impossible, it is impossible to renew them unto repentance, seeing they crucify unto themselves the Son of God afresh, and put him to open shame. And chapter 10 verse 26 says something similar. As I say, we'll touch on this next time. It says this, this need not be. Right? Now if we're, if we're uh, diligent disciples of the Lord's word, then we will not fall into that, that category, okay? Now, as a as a precursor in next next month, and when we talk about these two verses again, really, what that's saying we mentioned apostasy before and hardening of heart. It's it's a simple fact that that you know if if we repent at any point and we realise that we've went astray and we come back, we will be forgiven if we're genuine. But if we allow our hearts to get hardened and hardened and hardened, that that we come to a point where there's no no coming back, then that's apostasy, and that you know we've walked away from Christ. We haven't we haven't come back, and then that puts us in, in into the category where is there really is there really still you know like I say a hope, right? And it questions that, that there is a hope. Right, so it really comes down to making sure that our hearts are not allowed to get hard. So, as every true minister of, of God wants to give a good report. So, so ministers will, will encourage and exhort. They teach and they preach that they might see souls being saved and not just being saved and being like a, a flower or a plant that tries to start growing and then fails or st doesn't go any, anywhere. But actually to see, see their, the people coming in, being, becoming pillars, as we say in the church, becoming, becoming like grounded and growing in the Word and, and becoming real instruments that, that God can use in that in that body. So chapter six verse twenty our anchor of hope preaches out into the heavens. Our forerunner is for us entered. So our forerunner is Jesus. Jesus went before us. He pioneered a way for us to follow. He said, I go to prepare a place that where, wheresoever I am, you may be also. Mm -hmm. Now that's John chapter four, fourteen, verses 2 and 3. The Levitical priesthood, the high priest went in where the people couldn't go, as I mentioned. He represented people in God's presence. Through our high priest, we are brought into full fellowship with God. If we continue following Jesus, we will one day be where he is in glory. Amen. And that is a 
whistle stop to in the first six chapters there, okay? So if you've got any questions, we'll see what we could do. Um, but next time round, we're going to complete the rest. We're going to go from chapter seven up to the end of the book. So, okay? All right. So if you...